Good morning. Welcome to our Memorial Day tribute. At this time, I'd like to ask everyone to please stand, if you're able, for the presentation of the colors. Thank you, gentlemen. At this time, I'd like to invite the Palm Coast City Council to step forward and join me in leading the Pledge of Allegiance. Were 
are so gallantly streaming and the rocket fuck the bombs bursting in gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Thank you very much. Please be seated. I'm Mayor John Nets, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here today. I'd like to take just a moment and introduce some of the dignitaries who've joined us. If you would, please hold your applause until I've introduced all of the individuals. Vice Mayor Frank Meeker, Council Member Halsey Mormon. Council Member Mary DiStefano, Council Member Bill Lewis. From our Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Doug Baxter. From our County Commission, Commissioner Nate McLaughlin. Commissioner Melissa Holland. Commissioner Nate McLaughlin. Did I get him, Nate, already? Our Property Appraiser, Jay Gardner. Chief Deputy from the Sheriff's Department, Rick Look. Former City Councilman Bill Venny, County Administrator Craig Coffey, from our Fire Chief, uh, from our Fire Department, Chief Mike Beadle. Let's give them all a nice welcome. <laughs> this morning I'd like to share a thought with you. The secret ingredient of happiness is freedom, and the secret ingredient of freedom is courage. The sort of courage exhibited by the following. Private Jack Roth, a soldier from St. Louis, Missouri, was a victim in World War II. He was one of over 1,078,162 casualties of that war. Army Private First Class Stephen Asher a resident of Salt Lake City, Utah, gave his life along with 169,364 other Americans during the Korean War conflict. Sergeant David Brown from Dearborn, Michigan was killed during the Vietnam War. In those 90 months, 211,471 Americans died in Vietnam. Staff Sergeant John P. Blessinger from Fort Walton Beach, Florida was killed during the Gulf War while serving his country. 760 Americans died in that 30-day conflict. Private First Class Amy R. Simpler from Chadburn, North Carolina, died in Iraq, one of 4,447 fellow Americans who were victims in that Middle East conflict. United States Master Sergeant Michael George Heiser, one of 19 airmen killed in the 1996 Cobar Towers bombing. And it's not just our military that we remember here today, on the monument, you'll see Florida Highway Trooper Darrell Hayward, Sr., and Flagler County Sheriff Deputy Charles Chuck Cease. Someone knew these brave men and women, boys and girls, really, in many cases, and they loved them very much. These courageous Americans died giving service to our nation. They were someone's son or daughter, someone's brother or sister, someone's husband or wife and certainly someone's friend and neighbor. They lived in the Midwest, the South, the East, and the West, and yes, right here in Flagler County. Their family and their friends missed them every single day. They gave their lives with honor and with dignity. And that's why we gather here today on this final Monday in May in testament to all those who are not gathered here today. To the brave men and women who we remember on Memorial Day, we bow our heads in thanks and in prayer. 
Their legacy employs us to be vigilant in the defense of our freedoms and our rights. Their legacy reminds us to uphold and honor precisely that which the United States of America stands for. Memorial Day is a holiday of our souls. This time I'd like to share with you a poem entitled, When I'm Gone. When I come to the end of my journey and I travel my last weary mile, just forget if you can that I ever frowned and remember only my smile. Forget unkind words I have spoken. Remember some good that I've done. Forget that I've ever had heartache and remember I've had loads of fun. Forget that I've stumbled and blundered and sometimes fell by the way. Remember I've fought some hard battles and won ere the close of the day. Then forget to grieve for my going. <coughs> I would not have you sad for a day. But in summer, just gather some flowers and remember the place where I lay. And come in the shade of the evening when the sun paints the sky in the west. Stand for a moment beside me and remember only my best. In conclusion, let me paraphrase the words of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy, who said, a nation reveals itself not only by the men and women it produces, but more importantly, by the men and women it honors and remembers. Thank you for being here, and thank you for remembering. Naturally, when you try to list all of the dignitaries present, you're always going to miss one. The <laughs> My apologies to Alan Peterson, Chairman of the Board of the County Commissioners. At this time, I'd like to call upon Council Member Brigadier General Halsey Mormon to share some thoughts with us. Mayor Nets, City Council members, elected officials, Mr. Coffey, and friends of Palm Coast, good morning. You and I are lucky people. As Americans, we are incredibly blessed. We've never had to fight a modern war on our own soil. We've never been occupied by a foreign force. We are strong and capable politically, economically, and militarily. Indeed, we are a fortunate country and a fortunate people, yet we cannot forget the price paid for the peace and freedoms we enjoy today. This special observance is to honor those military personnel who made the supreme sacrifice for this country. All of these individuals have paid the ultimate price for this freedom. This country remains free and independent because it like those men and women who served so faithfully. We in this country owe a credit of debt and gratitude to those who sacrificed their lives so that we could live free. We can pay that debt by not forgetting but remembering what they did and what they stood for. I would like for you to listen to the words of the Port Charles M. Province. It is the veteran, not the reporter, who has given us freedom of the press. It is the veteran, not the port, who has given us freedom of speech. It is a veteran, not the campus organizer, who has given us the freedom to demonstrate it is a veteran, not the lawyer, 
who's given us the right to a fair trial. It is the veteran who salutes the flag, who serves the flag, whose coffin is draped by the flag, and who allows the protester to burn the flag. In closing, it is requested that you join me in a moment of silence as we honor our fallen heroes. Thank you very much. Thank you, General. <clears throat> I'd now like to call upon John Booker, District Representative, who will speak on behalf of Congressman John Micah. Good morning. I had a strange thing happen to me yesterday. I went to the beach, took my girls, um, went down to Canaveral Seashore. And those of you not familiar with Canaveral Seashore, it's basically an untouched uh, beach uh, few that you'll ever see in, in the shores of America. And I went running on the beach. And the strangest thing happened to me as I was thinking about what I was going to say today. And I had one of those moments that come few and far between. As I was running down the beach, I started thinking about June 6, 1944. And I was imagining as the waves were crashing down into the surf, what it must have been like, imagining what it must have been like for soldiers to land in Normandy on that day. I looked over to my right and the cliffs such as they are in Canaveral Seashore, filled with palmetto, scrub oak, pine tree, cactus. And I started imagining at that point in time, German revetments up there. And as they were, uh, as our soldiers were, were coming in to the shore. And the moment was very powerful to me. And I, I got done running. It was very hot. I went at 3.30 in the afternoon, which wasn't the smartest thing in the world to do. And I sat on the beach watching my kids play, and it was almost as if, as if I was transformed into that moment. Now, why am I telling you this? When I was in college, I worked at Stetson University during the summer on the construction crew. There was an old guy there. He was about 65 years old. He stood about... <laughs> Sorry, I was, I was, <laughs> I'm not running for office, so I don't have to worry about it. I was 20 at the time, so 65 was old. Anyway, his name was Carl, and Carl stood about five foot one and looked, he was from New York, and he was the epitome of what uh, uh, someone from DeLayan considers someone from New York to be. He was uh, loud and boisterous. Uh, he told you exactly what he thought. And I started thinking about Carl. And one day, we were doing something horrible. We were taking insulation out of the attic of one of the buildings at Stetson. And it had to have been 120 degrees. We were doing our break time, and I came into the, the break area, and I started complaining to Carl about how hot it was and how horrible this job was. I had powder all over me from taking the, the insulation out. And Carl, who I had known for two or three years uh, during the summers, sat down and he said, you don't know anything, John. And I said, well, what do you mean, Carl? I said, uh, you know, I'm up in this attic at 120 degrees and you're, you know, painting. He was a painter at Stetson. He goes, let me tell you something. He goes, I landed at Normandy. And I thought, and I was like, are you kidding me? There's no way, Carl. He said, You're, you don't know anything. Let me tell you about something that was hot and horrible and depressing and uh, mind-blowing. And he described for a couple minutes what he encountered on one of the beaches. I don't recall which. So as a 19 or 20-year-old, 
I sat there and it struck me. And as I was thinking about this yesterday, I, I thought about Carl. And I thought, oh my gosh, now I can only imagine what he went through, what you all went through, what people who have served in the military is want, uh, feels in combat. And again, I say this as a moment of, of how I can only imagine what those who served went through in, in wartime and even in peacetime. So it's with that, those thoughts that I conclude, and maybe the letter that I'm going to read from Congressman Micah is a letter to Carl and to you all. And so I will at least keep that thought in my mind because Memorial Day, Carl, we remember you today. We must, these are Congressman Micah's words to you. We must forever keep these heroes in our thoughts and prayers. Let us today on Memorial Day and every day thank the good Lord for their sacrifice. They've made it possible for all Americans to live in freedom. Let us remember Carl and those others who you've been touched by in your lives and pay tribute to the families and loved ones whose loss is immeasurable. May God continue the United States of America. So Carl, today we remembered. Thank you, John, and thank the Congressman for everything that he does for us. Now I'd like to call upon Post Commander Terry Howard from VFW Post 8696. Commander? Sir. <clears throat> Morning, folks. Once again, thanks for coming. <clears throat> My part of this starts off with, um, well, there was this old guy. <laughs> Thunder stolen again. At any rate, from our VFW Manual of Ritual, I'd like to say the following words. This is a solemn, important occasion, one we shall long remember with pride for the small part we are contributing here today. We are assembled here to pay tribute to the men and women of our community who have served in the United States Armed Forces, our neighbors who have fought in defense of this country and for preservation of our way of life. Those men and women are worthy of far greater recognition than the mere words or markers. The sacrifices they made and the deeds they performed shall be written in history and shall remain alive in our memories for generations to come. We express sincerely our pride and gratitude for the tasks they fulfilled. Before you is the flag of our nation, that symbol of all that is sacred to us. Look closely at it for a moment. The flag of the United States reflects what we are and what we hope to be. The white stripes symbolize purity of purpose in our freedom of thought and expression. Also, in that flag, we see the red stripes of courage, our willingness to die if necessary for preservation of American ideals. Then there is the blue of tranquility upon which the stars of our states are united to hold intact all that is truly ours, the desire for peace, prosperity, and happiness throughout our nation. We emphasize that interpretation of the flag of the United States, which you can see carried proudly and guarded so carefully. We emphasize our tribute to the flag because we are assembled here to honor those who have fought under that sacred, sacred symbol of our land. We have come here to dedicate a roll of honor naming men and women of this community who went forth as the living strength of our flag. They were the United States Armed Forces on land, sea, and in the air. Some of them did not return. They are the honored dead whose resting places are found in many foreign lands and waters around the globe. These American defenders left our schools, our shops, and our farms to take up weapons against the foes. They left their peacetime pursuits with confidence in their hearts and assurances on their lips. They were aware of the dangers before them, yet they responded without hesitancy to the call of duty. These are the men and women in whom we entrusted all our faith. They are the ones for whom we toiled and prayed here at home to help make their effort victorious. 
so they might return and live with us in lasting peace and security. The veterans of the foreign wars looks upon these honored ones as comrades. Within our organization are men who have served under the flag of the United States overseas and in many wars to preserve American freedoms. The honors we symbolize here express the appreciation of the VFW men for all comrades in arms. Fighting under the flag of this nation is the privileged duty of every able-bodied American and the veterans of foreign wars of the United States. We will always honor those who go forth in defense of our nation. They are true guardians of freedom, justice, and equality among men. And just before I close and leave the lectern, I'd like to ask one more time for all former and present service military personnel to address the flag and with me, present arms. Order, arms. Thank you. Commander, thank you and thank all of your members for your service. At this time, I'd like to call upon Ted St. Pierre, representative of Sons of the American Revolution, for a wreath presentation.
Now, as we conclude our ceremony today, I would like you to look to your right, to my left, for a tribute not only to the men and women who have given the ultimate sacrifice to our nation, but also as a tribute to the soaring hope for the future of this nation. Thank you for your presence here today. Have a safe trip home and have a wonderful day. If we get to the post, we'll check the flag. No, we're gonna get to the post, is what I meant to say. We'll check the flag. Yeah. Right, folks? Yeah. Well, you know what? The stupid commander forgot the flags in his vehicle. Now we gotta drive back and get them. Uh, no, I'm just going to get uh, kind of a... Heading west? Some people speculate.